Well, good morning, happy Friday, Incarnate Word. Welcome to another edition of the Weekend Roundup with uh, the entirety of... The Rectory. The Rectory. Mm -hmm. The entirety of the Rectory. Yeah. Um, all four of us are here. Uh, so this is the first appearance of the Weekend Roundup for uh, our new priest living with us, Father Steve Bauer. Father Steve, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself here uh, to the folks at home? I'm Father Steve, and I've been to a, a, a number of parishes, but... I don't know what to exactly to tell you, but uh, <laughs> I'm just real happy to be here. I so yeah. how long you been Thank a priest? You. I've been a priest forty six and a half years, so uh, probably a little longer than most of you guys here, mm -hmm. and um, and longer uh, than all of us have been alive. Yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> Father Bowles was a classmate of mine, oh, yeah. and we were in a big class. There was about eighteen of us, so um, he was a blessed memory. Sure, and I was glad to uh, be in class with him. But there was a lot of other fellows as well. Sure. Yeah, we're very happy to have Father Bauer living with us. Uh, he's retired uh, mm -hmm. and enjoying it. You, you, you have earned that privilege. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if you see Father Bauer around, I know he's been at a number of our Masses thus far, whether it's a daily Mass or on Sunday Mass. But if you haven't seen Father Bauer, go ahead and introduce yourself to him. Uh, he's a wonderful uh, member of our, of our rectory and of our clergy here at Incarnate Word, and we're very happy to have him. Thank you. So uh, things going on. Well, we have a, a Super Donut Sunday coming up on, yes. on this weekend. Like this, like much like Haley's Comet, this one only comes around once in a blue moon. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> don't do not do anything crazy like uh, Hail Bop or whatever they did. But yeah, you don't remember that I don't story. know, that was just before I yeah. was born, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but what is important is that we will have a, a sort of donuts, of course, but then in the gym we'll have an obstacle course for the kids, a big... Mm, uh, bounce house? Yeah, it's like bounce house, and uh, inflatable obstacle course, super fun. Um, so don't just run out to your cars, get a donut, run over to the uh, obstacle course. It'll be lots of fun. That'll be after the 715, 845, and 1030 masses. Is that where Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are going to have their yeah, like, that, epic No, epic that's, fight? In, that's in three months. Okay. Yeah, that's I thought it was going to be at our bounce house uh -huh. at Incarnate Word in our no, gym. I hope not. No. Yeah. Okay. Now, okay. is this yeah. thing deacon-sized? I think it is. It is for... Those of all ages, but with the caveat, don't like flatten some kid to get yeah, yeah. first okay. place. Yeah, <laughs> okay. avoid that. All right. Um, and we'll then to... we're also welcoming after the 1030 Mass, and at the 1030 Mass will be uh, all of our new school families will be kind of mm -hmm. mingled in there. So it should be quite a party this weekend. Yeah. Uh, we also have a preview of our nursery Bible school for children ages 1 to 4. That'll be during the 1030 Mass in the multi-purpose room. Uh, so 1030 Mass is going to be... <laughs> it's going to be a lot. Yeah, um, I have that one this weekend. So yeah, good luck. <laughs> pray for me, please. Um, but yeah, uh, we have a wonderful nursery Bible school for again, little kids ages uh, one to four. Uh, we'll ha be having a preview of that in the multi-purpose room during Mass on Sunday. Um, this past Friday, Deacon Lawson gave a really great talk on Our Lady of Fatima. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I did. It was uh, it was really good. We had about two dozen people show up. Uh, I think we're planning on putting. We recorded it. It's going to be put on the website or something. Or it already is. I don't know. Uh, but it went really well. Uh, it seems like a lot of people were interested in it. And it might be something that I continue to do in the future. Maybe once a month, once every six weeks or so. Uh, just give a talk in the church about a different topic. I know nice. there was a lot of, especially with the Eucharistic revival going on right now. There was some talks about. Wanting to talk on the Eucharist and some sure. adoration, so yeah, great stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, this coming Tuesday, we've got a holy day of obligation, and that day is the Assumption. Assumption, yes. yes. So uh, we'll have our kind of what we've come to have as our normal mass schedule. So this will be uh, a vigil mass at six o'clock on Monday, and then uh, masses on seven a.m., eight thirty a.m., noon, and six p.m. on the fifteenth itself. So. Hope you can make use of those options to fulfill your obligation. Yeah, it's always important, a beautiful time to celebrate Mary as well. Uh, first Holy Day of Obligation in a little mm -hmm. while. So yeah. uh, might come up upon us a little bit last minute, especially with school starting up the next day. But uh, don't forget uh, that Tuesday is a Holy Day of Obligation. We'll make sure there's an announcement about it at Masses on Sunday as well. And speaking of school. Yeah. It's... It's time. It's, it's time. Yeah, it's so, time. Uh, Winter is coming. No. Yeah. The, the horde <clears throat> returns... Um, on Wednesday and Wednesday will be a half day but what we're finding we have another 44 additional kids than we had last year so we're up to 447 um, in enrollment and we are pretty much maxed out in parking places uh, especially for pickup around 3 o'clock why that's important is if you're coming up here for adoration or for other things uh, meetings around the time that the kids get out of school just know that 
you'll want to park in the rectory rectory lot. Um, and then drop off just be careful especially if you're coming to the 830 yes. mass. the first couple of weeks of of school is always everyone kind of learning new routines and getting the traffic flow worked out so we just uh, implore your patience for the first the next couple of weeks just take your time and be patient with one another as we yeah work through it also on the first day as well I mean because we have a lot of parents will be I mean, with kindergartners getting pictures and things like that so traffic especially on Wednesday is going to be um, it's going to be something. <laughs> yes, no. yeah. uh, it's putting it lightly. Mm -hmm. So we just ask you to be patient. Um, again, it's you know it's a beautiful thing to have a wonderful, vibrant school on our parish grounds. So uh, be grateful for that. But yeah, uh, just a little bit of patience over the next few weeks would be greatly appreciated. And just yeah, watching out for people so we don't run them over. Yeah, I think the number one complaint is people that are turning right off of Bible of into incarnate word don't always give people turning left correct a mm -hmm. chance and there's a very don't limited block window the intersection. yeah a very limited window for left hand turn through olive into the lot so we'll work all that out but just yeah be patient be kind um, and then related to that since we have so many new parishioners new families the protecting god's children workshop which is required for all volunteers yep. uh, here on campus will be on Thursday from six to nine in Bollinger Hall. Um, so if you have questions about that, please call, but that uh, is for school, PSR, life team, coaches. Um, so we, Andrea Brockman is the, the point person. If you have any questions, please get in touch with her. It's good to get that taken care of at the beginning of the right. season. Right, rather than waiting right before a sports season. Uh, and you know, we, we we're at least offering it here. Mm -hmm. uh, not every parish is able to offer it at the parish. So if you can make use of it, again, that'll be Thursday the 17th next week. Um, let's see, some anniversaries. We've got a very big anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to Buzz and Nancy Peak on celebrating 64 years of marriage on August 22nd. That's coming up here in a week and a half or so. Mm -hmm. 64 years of marriage is a, a tremendous blessing, a tremendous accomplishment as well. Um, and so we congratulate you and your family. Thank you for your yes. Thank you for your vocation um, that, that has persevered th for, for 64 years. So mm -hmm. it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. thing. And then we will also want to pray for the repose of the soul of Julie Ann Hunkins, mother of Kelly Stilts, and Maria Stokely, wife of Charles. Uh, so we pray for them, for the repose of their souls, and the comfort and consolation of their families. All right, readings this weekend. Yes. What we got? Well, we've got the uh, the storm, you know, or the, the storm on the water, Jesus walking on the water. We've also got, uh, what is it, Elijah? Peter falling on his, and sinking. Yeah. Yeah, there's also yeah. that part of the The first reading is Elijah, but the uh -huh. Lord wasn't in the fire. Yeah. He was in the, the quiet whispering sound. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Deacon Lawson, what are you going to preach on this weekend? Uh, I'm preaching for Father Bauer this weekend for the, I think it's a 715 Mass. Great. Uh, so, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed <laughs> preaching, you know. Um, but I'm going to be preaching on how Jesus and God, the Lord appears to us in ways we don't expect. You know, Elijah was, that's the whole point of the reading with Elijah is, you know, he wasn't in this big showy storm, but that small voice. And obviously the apostles were not expecting Jesus to come walking to them on the water in the middle of a storm. Um, and so they freak out a bit. Sure. And so how that, how that applies to our life, how we can find the Lord in the unexpected in our life. Nice. Hmm. Father Schrader. I'm going to uh, kind of, it's, it'll be a scenic route, which seems to be more <laughs> my way these days. Um, but uh, there's a book called Atomic Habits, and this author studied, you know, kind of elite athletes and people who were the top in their field. And what he found is not so much like between normal or ordinary people and extremely talented people, it's not a talent differential so much as it is a focus. So mm. the people that are the best in their field, whether it's Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, or a CFO, you know, that's made billions of dollars is they know how to focus on the correct things. And so I'm going to kind of tie that in. You know, Peter was, <laughs> as long as he was focused on Jesus, he did something that had never been done before. He walked on water. But as soon as he lost his focus, he began to sink. And even with Elijah, he knew what to focus on, and so he was able to discern God in the breeze, in the whisper, rather than the earthquake and, and the, the huge storm. So just maybe talking a little bit about what is our focus, because that's what differentiates um, run-of-the-mill person from a saint. is yeah. not their talent, not their gifts, but their ability to focus sure. on Jesus. I'm a little bit 
close to that. So I'm going to be concentrating, <clears throat> excuse me, there, the wording that the gospel uses when Peter starts to think to sink, it was seeing how strong the wind was, he became afraid, which seems odd because the wind isn't necessarily something you see, it's something you feel, especially when you're out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, when the only thing that could determine the wind would be a sail if the boat had one. And what the gospel is getting at is that Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. Um, the evil one, whenever we're going through a storm, whenever we're going through a tempest, he draws, he tries to get our eyes away from Jesus and toward isolation. Whereas Jesus, if we have our eyes on him, he promises us relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about isolation versus relationship. I mean, like when we're tired and we're like really, really just exhausted, what do we do sometimes? We just go to our phones. You know, that's like the isolation of our time is to just go into our phones or whatever that might be. And Christ wants us to be in relationship instead because he knows that that will help us to literally walk on water uh, with whatever we're going through in life. So yeah. that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. So you might, be he might, you might be making some waves with that homily. I, I <laughs> see, like I knew that. Yeah. I mean, I think it'll turn the tide. No. For a lot of yeah. You don't want to say anything to that? No, no, no. <laughs> He does, he does this, okay? He does this all the time, Father Bauer. He makes dumb puns that just, like, ugh. It keeps me, you know, it anchors me, though, is what's the best part about it, you know? So, <laughs> you're really rocking his boat. Oh, yeah. my God. Okay, Folks, well. I am surrounded <laughs> by pain. Um, <laughs> if you could just pray for me. Between this and the 1030 Mass that I'll have this weekend, <laughs> that would be great. Well, anyway, folks, we hope you have a wonderful weekend. I know a lot of folks will be back this weekend for um, from vacations and everything. So we welcome you back. Great to see you. I uh, hope we have a wonderful week with school. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to get loud again, yeah. uh, and we're excited. So anyway, have a wonderful weekend. Hope to see you around at Mass. Take care. God bless. God bless.